this incarnation of her love, the more the love increases. When I say no to that child and contracept, I am killing that increase of sacrificial love. I am now turning into myself and seeking selfish ways instead of the divine way. Contraceptive attitudes in this world today are destroying the presence of God, destroying the increase of love, destroying the expansion of love in children. Hence we have contraception, abortion, euthanasia, now we even have infanticide. All of it becomes part of the slippery slope when you destroy the purity that is necessary for the relationship. So true love, expansive love, sacrificial love always will increase by the means of giving birth to children. This also is expressed in regards to the priest. By nature, we must give this seed. We must speak the Word of God. And we must therefore go to the Word of God regularly to receive the nourishment that is necessary in order to speak that you might understand how to grow in your life and become more and more authentically Catholic, Christ-like. And so, by doing these little talks, it gives me an opportunity to use that gift that God has given to me of producing seed in you. And through the perception of the truth that you hear from me, you will change the way you look at life. You will change the way you look at relationships. And then you will begin to say which relationships are fostering that which is eternal life in me and in others. That which does not cut it out. That's all I can tell you. St. John Bosco said, three things destroy souls and take them to hell faster than anything else. Bad companions, bad books, bad words. Very easy to remember that. Bad companions, bad books, bad words. Those three things can infiltrate into the heart and destroy the heart, which desires the eternal word, not the word of the world. So we are in a battle. We're in a battle for that which is eternal and lasting. Third, the third the spiritual law that determines relationships is this, that as that love expands into others, I must teach the law of sacrifice. Teach your children. Teach sacrifice. A sacrifice is the act of making holy. That's what it is. Sacra, holy. Ficio, make holy. You're teaching. Make it holy. Offer it through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ to the Father in heaven for the salvation of the souls that listen to me. Make it a sacrifice. Teach sacrifice. I was in a school oh, a few years ago evaluating the classes and so forth. And I went into each classroom, and one of the classrooms there was little ones, maybe second or third grade, I believe. And as I saw around the classroom, papers on the floor. And I began my talk, and I went through the classroom picking up the papers on the floor as I gave my talk. After I picked up all these papers and put them into the trash, I asked the class, the little kids, what was Father doing? And one of the little girls, she said, Father, you are cleaning our room. And I said, no, I wasn't cleaning your room. I was saving souls. St. Therese, the little flower, says in a little way, picking up a simple piece of paper that somebody dropped, for and out of love, sacrificial love, can save a soul. There are so many souls, I said, on the ground that I could pick up and give to Almighty God by that act of love. How many of you could find a piece of paper and do the same and save a soul? Those little kids all of a sudden went looking on the ground. They were down, picking up the whole place was cleaned up in a second. The teacher looked at me and, and I said, oh well, they got the picture. Two days later, a mother came up to me and said, Father, 
Now, were you the one that talked about sacrifice and all those things? And I said, yeah, I guess I was. She said, you know, my son hasn't stopped sacrificing since he learned that. The moment we learn to teach this law of sacrifice, our good little flower says, her most powerful arms and weapons against evil are prayer and sacrifice. So, what does sacrifice mean to you? Can it be that you can sacrifice a glass of wine, or a Coke, or something pleasurable, ice cream, whatever it may be? Can you sacrifice it in this particular moment? Do you need it? Most of the time we don't need. And if we say no to the body, what happens? The soul gains. So teach the law of sacrifice. By teaching it, you will increase the love in this world. Much like the Hirogivi in Russia. They have made a pact with Almighty God. They will take on the punishments of others. They will sacrifice their bodies to be punished for the sins of another. Well, there they are. What's their purpose as they get beaten? They do not hate the beater. Instead, they ask Almighty God to forgive the beater. One of the heights of true holiness is to pray for our killers. The Hirogivi give us the example. They say very clearly, if the person who did the fault committed this unforgivable sin in the communist Gestapo or the Gulag, that individual would increase hatred because he would hate those who were punishing him. Probably justly, but hating them is not what needs to happen in our world. Therefore, their act is an act of sacrificial love. If sacrificial love increases in this world, Satan is conquered. Now, the fourth. The fourth, I'm going to ask you to look up. 1 Corinthians 13 one and following. Love is. This is Agapal. The highest expression of love in the scripture comes out of St. Paul's 1 Corinthians 13. And it is good for us to put it up on our mirror because this is the goal of every Catholic life. Every life, really. It doesn't matter. Catholic or not Catholic, the truth is that 1 Corinthians 13 is the goal that every one of us must strive for. There's only salvation in and through our Lord Jesus Christ and through His Church. His Church is the Catholic Church. The Church of Christ is the Catholic Church. I do not say the Church of Christ subsists in the Catholic Church as Vatican II. It is not a subset of the Church of Christ. The Catholic Church is the Church of Christ. And hence salvation. Hence, 1 Corinthians 13 speaks very clearly. Love is one. That which re 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 rejoices in the truth. Rejoices in the truth, not in error. Love is kind, patient, understanding, victimal, sacrificial. It goes right through a, a, a litany of actions that we know. All of these actions are actions of love. And these actions are productive of the variety of virtue. All virtue ultimately leads to love and comes out of love. Humility is that which allows us the seedbed of love. And so, when we have this before our family, before our relationships, in all of our relationships, if we keep this formula, this goal in our mind, then we will achieve the goal. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but we keep the track and we get that railroad track going for us and we will not stop until we achieve the perfection of love, as God asked us. Be ye perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. You do not understand this perfection and how this perfection of love takes place in your life. Remember this story of, uh, it came on the internet, it was also one that we heard in San Francisco, working with the handicapped children in the Agnew State Hospital. The story was one of 
a father who had a son that was uh, not like any other boy, couldn't throw as any other boy. He loved everything other boys loved, but his body just did not correspond with the coordination that other boys have. At the end of the year at the hospital there, all of those who are aiding the kids that we call special, our God's special children we call them, others call them handicapped, whatever. But the fact is God's special children get together once a year at the cathedral to offer the mass of God's special children. And there each one of us is with our little aid or our little person that we were fostering through the year. And at the end we come to a meal together and then families will get up and say how grateful they are that this hospital took the time with their child or did something good for their child and so forth and everyone's very positive. Then this man came up and he said, we read that God told us you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. How is my son, Jay, perfect? He can't run, he can't play, he can't do the things that other boys do. He can't think as well as other boys. How is my son perfect? Everybody was there with mouth kind of a gap. This man was really asking the question. And no answer was coming forth. He took his son and went out. His son and he were passing down the street and there they were coming close to home and there's a baseball field and kids were playing. And the little boy said, Daddy, I want to play, I want to play. And the dad said, they won't let you play. Daddy, I want to play. He said so much, insisted so much, the father went over and asked one of the boys, would you allow my son to play? Oh, sure, this boy said. He saw that the other boy that was going to play was not truly capable. But he says, yes, he can play with us. We're down by three runs. It's only three more innings. They can come and play. And so they took him and they put him in right field, as you and I would probably do too. We hope that nobody hits it out there. And they went through the next inning or so. No change, no change. Last inning, they were the home team that Che was on. And lo and behold, they got a hit. Man got on first. He stole the second. Man bunted him to third and got out. Another man struck out. Next one got on by balls and he walked and ran to second. Now first was open and the next man got up there and he got...